to another video, everybody. As you saw, the custom tubular, adjustable, rear, lower control arms of the Rally Miata have been uninstalled. They have been completely disassembled. The heim joints are off, the bushings are off, and they're ready to go to power. They're not going to power coat. Unfortunately, the powder coat guy right down here was super swamped this week, so he doesn't have time to powder coat my control arms. Well, he does, but it would just take too long. So instead, we're gonna spray paint them, which is unfortunate, but I wanna get this car driving, I wanna get it aligned, I wanna get it all assembled. I don't really wanna wait for powder coat, and we'll do the paint right, all right? We'll let it dry for two full days before reinstalling it, so it, it should be okay. Based on your guys' suggestions from the last video, we are gonna be painting the control arms white to match the rest of the tubing because, well, the roll cage is all white, the chassis is white. We need more white visible from the outside, so these control arms will look good in white. After that, we've got some awesome stuff. We have some new front suspension. We are swapping the Forester struts out for a adjustable WRX STI strut, so the dampening is gonna be A, adjustable, and B, stiffer, but it's gonna lower it two inches. So to raise it back up, we've got new King Off-Road Springs. Now these are Rallycross Springs. They're one and a half inches taller than the stock springs. The spring rate is stiffer, the springs themselves have better travel, and the springs themselves are lighter. So the front suspension, we're gonna lower it just ha about half an inch. It's gonna be a lot stiffer, it's gonna be adjustable, and it will match the rear, which is more stiff and adjustable. So that's gonna be awesome. After this video, the suspension will be better suited for Rallycross than it is for anything else, and that's what I want. So that's what we're doing. And then we're also going to be removing the lights and getting the new headlight blinker set up all situated. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and start painting the control arms and doing the front suspension. Wah, bah, 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 bah. Don't judge me. A little update for all of you guys. The control arms are painted and looking awesome. They feel great. We're gonna give them a full another day to dry because, I don't know, they feel still feel a little tacky. But that's just what happens when you use gloss paint and a gloss clear coat. It takes a while to get really, really fully cured. So those are drying. Um, now I didn't film this, but I went ahead and removed the rear struts, completely disassembled them, took the top hats off, took the springs off, took the, took the bottom perch off, and I am completely restoring them because they were pretty rusty. They were pretty, uh, they're pretty old, but they're still good. The the dampening works perfectly. The shock itself doesn't leak. It feels really good. The springs are awesome. Everything about them are is good. They just they just didn't last the Chicago winter very well. So for instance, I painted the springs to match those front springs. I went ahead and painted the bottom perch, which was all rusty. Looks much better. And then top hats are all painted, looking good. And here are the actual shocks themselves. I went ahead and used a rust removing gel on the top. So you can tell it, it went really well on this one, but not so well on this one. And I haven't done the bottoms yet. So I'm gonna do that again. Then we reassemble those coilovers and it's all done. Um, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and uninstall the front struts and then start swapping over the top hats and getting the new struts ready to go back in. Oh, and look, after sitting for a year, Pasha is finally working on his car again. It's got a radiator, it's got an intercooler, and we're starting on the intercooler piping now. You guys can go over to Pasha's channel if you wanna see that, but let's get it. So here again, we're comparing Subaru suspension parts. We've got the WRX STI strut and the Forester strut. So the, the STI strut is, the STI strut is shorter and it will lower it. Then we have the new springs versus the old springs. So these were stock WRX springs and these are the lift springs for our WRX. These are supposed to lift a stock WRX an inch and a half. Honestly, I have no idea if it's gonna lower this car two inches or raise it an inch or, I don't know what's gonna happen, but we're gonna put it all on and find out.
both shocks and struts are in. It really does kind of look like a clown, but that's okay. Throwback to the clown shift knob setup in the, the WRX wagon. I guess we had to have some clowniness on this, but this is the best setup. Looking at all the forms, everyone says WRX, you know, adjustable dampening, struts, and then the rally cross spring. You can tell that the hub suspension is sitting much higher already, as in it's closer to level than it was with these struts, and that's because these struts are shorter. Now, slightly worrying thing is that I'm sure these springs have more preload, have a stiffer spring rate. So I'm worried we're gonna put it on the ground and it won't compress at all. And if that's the case, we can't use these because this is obviously meant for a, a car that's, that weighs a thousand pounds more. And for rally cross, for off-roading in general, you want a, a shock and strut setup that compresses a little bit and squats when it's just sitting on the ground. That way, if you go over to a, a deep bump, the wheel will be pushed down into the bump and all the tires will always stay on the ground. If we set this on the ground and it doesn't compress at all, then if we go over a big bump, the wheel's not gonna go down any uh, at all and then, you know, your wheel is not on the ground, you don't have any traction, it's bad. So let's hope that when we put this on the ground, it compresses a little bit and we can use these because this is gonna be a, a good setup and it was kind of extensive, so I don't wanna switch. I'm gonna quickly paint the lower control arm, make it look a little bit prettier, and then we can head over to the lighting stuff. So, lighting and issues with that. Obviously, in the video where we made the light rack, we discussed this, but I'll go over it again. The problem is that I have a hard time seeing because the lights are popped up, the hood scoop is popped up, and the hood is very tall to fit the motor. So I'm really, when I'm driving, I'm looking at that little crack between the headlight and the hood scoop. Not very much visibility, and I can see the road ahead of me, which is fine, and if you're on a racetrack, we're doing rally cross, you're supposed to be looking you know, far ahead, but it's like, especially when you're turning right, I can't see much, and I want more visibility. The other thing is, I don't necessarily like the look of two lights popped up and the, the, the hood scoop popped up and everything that's going on the front end. Don't necessarily like that. And then there's the issue of the actual lights themselves. The blinker bulb is just a normal halogen bulb that I spray painted orange and it didn't really work. So, this is what I came up with. With the help of you guys, if we got rid of the hood scoop, we would have to get rid of the top mount intercooler and do a whole bunch of stuff. We're not gonna do that. It's not worth getting a whole new tune right now. It's not worth doing all that work. We wanna drive it. So we're gonna keep the hood scoop, but we're gonna get rid of the pop-up lights, which is kind of sad because they're kind of iconic, but it's all right. It's actually gonna look more like a Miata with the, just the headlights down. So we'll fabricate some sort of bracket to make the headlight lids parallel to the hood. So it just looks like a normal Miata with its lights pop down. And then we'll go to the stock linker location in the Miata. We'll take that apart, disassemble it. And inside we will put this, which this is a little baby, itsy baby light bar with both white and amber lights in it. Three wires. So this can do white for a headlight and amber for a blinker. And then we'll put these in those stock location blinker housings, then put the blinkers back in, wire it all up. So both the headlights and the blinkers will be coming from the same area. We'll have to have some sort of switchback where if you have the headlights on and you pop on a blinker, it turns off the headlight, then blinks the amber. Unless if the amber is bright enough, but I don't think it is. And technically that would be illegal. So what we have to do is remove the lights. We have to install these lights in the blinker housings. Then we have to fabricate a bracket to mount the headlight lid with the hood and make that all look good. That will probably be the hardest part. And then we have to wire it up. Not sure if I said that. Let's get started. Well, after a whole bunch of cutting and fitting and such, I got the light to fit in there nicely. And it fits in the car perfectly, so that's all good. I'm gonna clean it up a bit. I'm gonna paint it black just so it kind of blends in with the housing. And then I will put the cover back on. This one's done and I have to do it all again. Great. It's the next day. We're gonna take a break from doing the lighting and we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the rear suspension, get the car on the ground, aligned, all that stuff done. And then if we have extra time, we'll finish the lighting. Let's reassemble these coilovers. This time, I'm using anti-seize. 
Use anti seize on your coils, kids. The coilovers are in, and they look really good. They look so much better than they did. There's no rust. The bronze and orange together looks a little weird, but you don't really see the bronze from like back here. You just see the orange, and that does match the front. The black doesn't match the red of the front, and that's really all you can see. It's it's as it's as good as we're gonna get since we're mixing Miata suspension and uh, Subaru suspension. But um, I also forgot that I had ordered new alignment bolts for the rear suspension because you guys were complaining about the rusty alignment bolts. They work just fine, but you guys were complaining about them. And and rightfully so, they were really ugly. But I have to wait until later today when they're gonna get delivered, which hopefully it is today. And if it isn't today, then shit. It's all your guys' fault. It's not my fault for getting to order them and ordering them late. It's not my fault for uh, not paying for the most expensive shipping. It's your guys' fault for making me get new bolts. Just kidding. But yeah, we can't put the rear control arms on and we can't reassemble the rear suspension. So back to lighting. <laughs> For now, I'm going to leave the, the circle pattern on these lights, but let me know what you think I should do. I can leave them the way it is, I can make them clear, or I can make them tinted black. Now we have to make some brackets that hold the lids to the hood. Now I could make brackets that hold it to here, but then I have to do some welding on the chassis. I think I'm just gonna rivet some pieces of aluminum to hold it all together. And that way, when you open the hood, you have more access to stuff as well. And right when I started working on the lighting again, the bolts got delivered. So we're gonna go back to working on the suspension and get that all finished up so I can get this video out to you guys. All we have to do is mount the headlight lids. We'll do that in the next video. For now, let's go ahead and press the bushings back into the control arms and put those back into the car. Ash, you gotta do some special effects where when he's putting in the bushings, it's just me like flicking it and it just like pops in. Like that. Control arms, rear suspension, and actually all the suspension is now assembled. So we can put the wheels on, lower her down. Now I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure all of you guys noticed that I stacked a bunch of washers to space the heim joints right in the middle of the, the subframe on the Miata. That's obviously sketchy. So I went ahead and fabricated, fabricated, I just cut up some solid steel bushings to the right size. So it's a nice piece of solid metal, much better. Went ahead and greased up the heim joints with a grease gun and she's good. So let's go ahead and put the wheels back on, drop her to the ground, torque down some of the bushings that are normal bushings, and then uh, start adjusting the alignment. <laughs> I'm really excited to see it on the ground. I, I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited. So the front drooped, it definitely drooped. Didn't droop that much though. It drooped like not that much. And now the front is taller than the rear because I did lower the rear. But this is, so ideally I just, I want to lower the front a little bit more, but I can't. <laughs> ah! If I put a stock spring in it, it's going to go down an inch and a half. The complications of not having a coil over. The rear, I can make whatever height I want. Well, that's low as it can go. They can go as tall as I want. The front, since it's just a, a stock strut and spring, I mean stock, stock style, it's not like I can just uh, adjust the lever and make it go up and down. I have to find a different combinations of springs and struts. But I, ah, 
I wish there was like a stock preload, but increased spring rate spring and stock height, which obviously if it had more preload, it would be taller, but that one has a, a lot more preload, a lot higher spring rate, same, same size. So that's what gives it the lift is that it has more preload, it's less droop and it has um, a higher spring rate. If I wanted to, I could just lift the rear a little bit more, but I don't want it to be that tall. I want it to be low, stiff, rally cross, you know? This is way more real gap than a rally cross car would have. But I guess it is kind of Baja-ish, which is kind of cool. For now, there is nothing we can do. Let me know what you guys think, what your thoughts are. I could buy a rally cross coilover for a WRX, but they're just so damn expensive. It's hard to justify that, especially since I just sunk a bunch of money into that suspension. I could raise the rear a little bit to get that uh, slight uh, rake that we want so I can see a little bit better, or I don't know. For now, we're gonna go ahead and line it because <laughs> Wow, looks like a tap dancer or something. It's got way too much positive camber. Whoa, okay, I had a kind of a brain fart. I'm realizing these rear springs are obviously broken in. They've had, you know, 10,000 miles on them. Front springs are brand new and I literally just dropped the car on the ground. You know, they're gonna break in and sag a little bit. And I think that's all we need. I literally, I, I, I moved the steering wheel and it's already much better. Uh, so if you wrote any suggestions already, <laughs> Sorry, but let's just drive it for a little bit and then figure out what, what, what we're gonna do. So that alignment wasn't super accurate. I was just using basic measurements, basic hand tools to get it as close as possible. The idea is that I got the alignment pretty much good with the Heim joints, and then I'm going to take it to an alignment shop and then they can use the alignment bolts, which are more precise, and they have obviously an alignment rack to get the alignment perfect. But my DIY alignment is done. Camber is significantly better. It's about zero on each side. The white control arms are perfect. Thank you guys for that suggestion. The white, with, like it brings the white into the car more than just the roll cage. And that <laughs> it looks, it looks really cool. And I can also tell that I'm going to love the way the front end looks. It looks sleeker, it looks, it just looks so much better. And it reminds me of the old Rally Miata quite a bit. Pop-up headlights, even though they're popped down, hood scoop, light rack, except this time it's like a legit version. Everything is better done. But the moment you've all been waiting for, let's go ahead and take this thing for a drive. Play the suspension, stiffen it, soften it. Let's just have some fun. Let's go ahead and start off of a, a nice and easy, uh, you know, shakedown. It's got new control arms, new heim joint. There's a lot of stuff that's new and I wanna make sure I didn't forget anything. I think I timed everything, but you know, there's always a chance to forget something, so. <laughs> Feels good to be driving this thing again. It really needs a wash, but it's one problem about having windows. It's hard to wash it. I either have to hand wash it or I have to put windows in. Maybe I should put windows in and just take it to the wash. This thing is so smooth, like the, the way uh, the clutch and stuff engages. It's so awesome. I can see better. You know, over to my right, it's still all rough, but this, this is probably good enough. Especially if the front lowers a little bit when it breaks the suspension in. Yeah, my self-alignment is like perfect. <laughs> that's always awesome. So the test is, oh wow, yeah, that's, that's much better. It's definitely more planted. The rear is stiffer because of the, the relocation of the uh, struts and the front stiffer just because it's got new, new, uh, new things. Sounds like there's a clank from the back. So right now, all the dampening is on its softer setting, and it's pretty smooth. Even with the polyurethane bushings and the heim joints in back, it's pretty smooth. I do feel the bumps, you know, from the back, but it's pretty good. Turning is so much better now. <laughs> I can't wait to just actually drive this thing, you know? It's awesome. <laughs> this is so awesome. It really does, it feels more like a Miata now, is the best way to explain it. It had SUV suspension on it before, and it it was a little soft. Ah, now we just gotta finish those headlights, and then we have a, a major engine up upgrade coming. Something that will prevent the Subaru motor from exploding. And also, just to mention, the removal of the lights did make a big difference. 
in terms of how uh, comfortable it is to drive. I can see a lot more. So, this was a success. <laughs> it still hasn't warmed up. This thing takes forever to warm up. Oh, my blink is still on. Let's bring it back. I want to stiffen the dampening and see how crazy it is. I went ahead and maxed the dampening out. The front's a little weird because you can just kind of keep turning it. So I don't know if that's maxed out now, but. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, actually. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, that's for sure. <laughs> It's still really, it's tall and it's stiff. Sounds like something in the back is like kind of bottoming out almost. It's weird. Um, let's take it onto this bumpy road up here and see, see how it feels. Feels okay, I'm going 20 miles per hour over some pretty big bumps. I think it's just the trunk bouncing up and down and hitting. Yeah, I think so. Hard to tell. I just don't know why the suspension would be doing it. So this is essentially what the rally cost is going to be like, this bumpy ass shit. Oh, that isn't, no, it's not the, what can it be? The control arms don't bottom out, the, the heim joints don't bottom out. It's, it's not like the, the coilovers are bottoming out on this tiny little, no, it's not that big of a,